Today, we really wanted to ground the conversation in the ways that arts has worked into system intervention. Specifically, today we'll discuss strategic arts engagement within the court system. And then we'll, we really want to talk about how do we highlight this type of practice and what are the ways that we talk about this work in, no, in order to call attention to how arts has a role in system intervention. So we're gonna, we're gonna switch the flow a little bit today and we're gonna begin with a presentation by Brooklyn Justice Initiatives to really, to allow us to really dive into the mechanics of diversion and where therefore arts fits in to the, um, to, to system operations within the court system. Y'all ready over there? All right. Give me one second. Over. Yeah. All right. Good morning again, everyone. Um, like I mentioned earlier, my name is Janine John Pierre. I'm the program manager for Project Reset. I fall, I'm from the project site Brooklyn Justice Initiative, but we fall under the umbrella of Center for Foreign Innovations. I think it's important for me to name um, the Center for Foreign Innovations mission, which is pretty much to um, make the justice system more humane and effective for effective and fair. So by doing so, we are collaborating with gover the government and engaging with advocacy and the community to pretty much just push the system in a positive direction. So out of um, you know the efforts of doing that, we do a lot of research and statistics shows that um, being able to help an individual before having to go through the system is helpful so we came up with project reset which originally started started as a pilot which Richard will tell you more about it started as a pilot as a pre-court pre-arraignment pre early diversion program which allows individuals to just um, connect with themselves the community and resources within the community um, good morning everyone good morning everyone uh, my name is Richard uh, pronouns are he and him I'm the community liaison for Brooklyn Justice Initiatives, uh, Project Reset. Um, <clears throat> so I'll give you guys a brief description about um, our diversion program. Um, Project Reset is piloted program in Brooklyn and Manhattan in 2015 and 2016, serving just the youths um, of ages 16 and 17 years old. Um, after that, we officially launched uh, Project Reset in Brooklyn um, in the spring of 2019. Um, it was active throughout the summer of 2020. Um, assuming that Project Visa has since launched a citywide operation um, as of October of 2021, offering adults um, arrested for eligible misdemeanors a chance to resolve their case um, by completing community-based programming, um, such as the Brooklyn Museum and um, what TNT groups that we have. Um, after, um, once you complete that program, um, participants will have successfully completed the program, I should say. Um, um, having to be said either declined or, or dismissed by the DA's office. Um, um, and as well as not using the crew back to the DA's. Um, I will pass it on to the and now we'll be talking about um, a few of our, few of our So what that actually looks like in the day to day is a few different types of sessions that participants can go through. Um, so participants have the option to like explore um, through group programs such as what we have at Brooklyn Museum. Um, we also have an arts based program at our community space. Um, and we have a few virtual options right now that uh, look at um, tools for new thinking um, in a cognitive based, uh, cognitive theory based uh, program. And these sessions are like around one to two hours. We also offer one to one. Um, counseling on an, on an as a basis. And what, and what these programs, programs really look at, at is kind of giving um, a space for participants to discuss and explore themes of like conflicts and um, factors that kind of get people into tough situations and can just, you know, lead to things like arrests or um, stuff like that. And um, kind of through the programs we um, we have a lot of discussions and activities that, that help create that space and walk them through different themes. So I want to go 
over the, the traditional process when you do receive a DAT. But before I do that, I want to name that through our April Prize and engaging entry for clients who are reluctant to, um, who are reluctant or mis mistrust the intervention and acknowledge accountability. So using art allows them to do a lot of personal reflection and increase hope for personal, um, personal, if, like I said, post personal reflection and just in the community itself. So like I said, I'm gonna go through the traditional process of when you receive a DAT. So a DAT is a low misdemeanor charge. And usually that, that's a summons that is given at the time of arrest. From there, that ticket, the officer would then give it over to the DA's office. The DA's office will try to gather additional information to try to pursue those um, charges by prosecuting the, the case. From there, individual then report to court which would be the date that's listed on the summons. And then when I say report to court, that means they are arriving at arraignment and are being arraigned and they're pursuing the case. However, we came up with Project Reset. So Project Reset gives the opportunity for that to be diverted. A person is receives the summons, the DAT summons, and from there the district attorney reviews the case, but also puts it in a bucket so that they can um, allow them to go through a diversion program, which would be us, Project Reset, we then, um, the project, the DA's office then contact the defense counsel, which would be the public defenders, legal aid society, Brooklyn Defender Services, um, tell them that, you know, your client is eligible for project reset. And from there, they will, um, they have a few days to contact the individual, let them know about the, the opportunity that ha they have. And then they contact us, our office at project reset. From, from there, I, um, Richard and McKenna see those clients will come in through our system, through our system, system and then they'll start, they'll start, they'll start outreach, outreach and then they'll enroll, enroll them in a program. program. Like we mentioned earlier, it can be programming at Brooklyn Justice, um, at our site, Brooklyn Justice Mission, or Brooklyn Museum, or we also have um, like one on one sessions for individuals who just are not um, in a space to be in a group setting. Um, Upon completion, we then just let the district attorney office know, and that's in many cases, like, like, like Richard said, is either declined to prosecute it, or if for whatever reason the case was docketed, at least the case will get dismissed and, um, and the individual will be done and have, not have to step foot in the court office. All the referrals come through the DA's office. Um, the eligibility is basically if you're arrested in Brooklyn, if you're 18 years or older, and if you're eligible, if you're deemed eligible by the district attorney's office. Do folks have any questions? If, if so, just sort of raise your hands and un unmute. No questions or you can drop them into the chat as well. So just introduce yourself, everyone else did in the room. Okay, um, what time is it? It's still you're 11, 11, you're at 11.33. 11 11. Yeah, there you go. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I, I ain't want to be tacky with it. Um, <laughs> my name is Hassan, formerly. Um, my alias is Dizzy, when I allow people to call me and things like that. Um, just a little background, oh, pardon me. Just a little background about myself. Um, I am um, a youth advocate for a uh, runaway and homeless youth center called The Door. I am an assistant teaching artist for a nonprofit organization called Drama Club. I um, am a participant of Dance Dancing for Solidarity. It's Sarah Pope. It's Sarah Becky. Um, yeah, that's about it. As of right now, I want to. I know I'm a little late, so we were supposed to jump in this first, but we gonna give a little icebreaker so that everybody can, you know, feel more acquainted, feel like everyone's, you know, here, or at least together in the room. I'm gonna take a little uh, excerpt from my drama club improv book, and we're gonna do a game called The Story of Your Name. And basically how that would go is, um, whether it's an alias that you have, a nickname, or anything that you prefer, or your actual name. You would sit here and just tell a brief little story about it. Um, it could be however it is. I, I don't want to categorize it for you. It may be funny, um, embarrassing, silly, however. 
But um, just so that we can, you know, break the tension, everybody gets to know each other. Um, I'm not, I'm not sure which. I'll, I'll, I'm, I'll volunteer first to give everybody the crack at it. I'm just not sure which name I want to give y'all. Either story is pretty funny to me. Let me um, Let's see everybody. I'll, I'll give you guys my, my actual. Rather than the slide. So, see each other. my mom, my mom, you know, gave birth to. Well, initially, I, I, I didn't want to, you know, be born. So I was initially supposed to be born on the 20th. I waited an extra seven days. <laughs> so then after that, I was born. My mom was in the hospitals, you know, tired, all that. She just, she just didn't know. She didn't have a name for me yet. So it came to like day three, day four, before it's time to get processed. The doctors, the nurses like, all right, we need a name for him. What's his name going to be? Uh, I guess through our conversation with whatever, somebody said Hassan. Now, if you, you break it down, it's her son. <laughs> yeah. So that was her way of, like, that's her son. Her son. Yeah. And the rest is history. <laughs> Let's pass it to someone in the virtual space. Okay. To get them all warmed up. Uh, Lee, I see you. I'm going to call on you right away because you're, you're a familiar face. All right, now we've we've taken some time to meet everyone in the virtual space. Wait, who's? Oh my God, Janine! I'm sorry. I feel like you have got start blending in. Can we zoom in? He wasn't gonna say right, nothing. I'll be quick. I don't have a really cool story like everybody else, but I will let you know that my my dad wanted a boy, and he wanted me to be named after him. My mom was like, "Hell no!" His name is Fritz, and my mom was like, "Yeah, no, we're not doing that. How about a J name?" They were going to go with James. But then my mom went to the name book, found out I was a girl, and went with Janine. My joke is that the name means God's gift. So I always, I'm the youngest of all my siblings, so I do tease my siblings and say, like, I'm God's gift. Like, I was the best one. I was, and that's why they stopped after me. Then Drake dropped his song, God Plan. I was like, it's given. My name is God's plan when we are work, and I'm God's gift to y'all. <laughs> 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 Okay, now I, I feel like we've gotten a little closer to one another, so we're going to move into an exercise. And listen, D Dizzy, thank you for, for uh, suggesting that exercise or that icebreaker. And ultimately, it is a way of moving close, more closely to one another, but also remembering. And the way we remember often in this work is in storytelling. And so it became important for us to think about this initial workshop and the ways that we describe creative arts engagement's role in system intervention in terms of how do we tell the story of this work. And therefore, and maybe more importantly, how do we advocate for arts and its role in system intervention? And one thing that we notice, and again, part of the intentionality of this series of four workshops is being able to have a ripple effect in which collectively we are investigating the ways that this work works and the ways it can continue to evolve and insert itself in intervention, interventionist work, but also narrative revision work as applied to the criminal legal system. And one thing that we noticed Therefore, and in our intentions of bringing this work to a wider community, and not only those that were brought in as teaching arts for Project Reset, one thing that we noticed in, in reviewing applications is that quite a few individuals had a difficult time describing the why. And therefore, not articulating their stated purpose as to why they even wish to dedicate themselves to the, and their practice to system intervention. And so we wanted to spend some time in this first workshop grounding us in to the why. What is the essence of our practice? What are the values that we wish to communicate that advocates for creative, strategic creative engagement as it is applied to something like court system intervention? What is the language that we use and what are we really truly wishing to articulate as to why art works in these spaces? But rather than 
rather than encounter that subject through conversation, we're going to approach it through art making. And so, given the time, we're going to move through this a little more quickly than, you know, than in other settings, but that's fine. We'll get there. What I'd like for you to do, I'm staring here because I have a better view of everyone in the virtual space, so don't be too confused. I'm looking at you specifically. What I want you to do is this. As you are all practitioners in various ways, some of you are more identified as artists, others as teaching artists, others as educator, educators, we all intersect in a desire to do work that intercepts or, or overlaps with social justice and therefore has a purpose, a purpose towards social change. So what I want everyone to do in the virtual space in here is to think about what is the essence of their work? What is a value that you hold at the center of your practice that really, for you, dials into the why you do this? Why you invest so much in the possibilities of art as a catalyst for social change? Think about that word, right? Now, you're not going to share that word. You're not going to share, and I want you to try to bring it down to a single word as best as possible. Don't tell yourself or give yourself the room for an entire essay. Dial it down to a single word that for you best holds that essence, that value, as to why you've dedicated so much of your time, your effort, and your soul in this work. And as you do that, start thinking about a piece of art in its various forms that for you, you always return to because it connects or reminds you of that value. So think of a film, a TV show, an art object, an experience, a theater piece, even a dance movement, whatever it might be, that for you, you always seem to return to because it connects with that value. And I want you to start looking for that, if you're in the virtual space, start looking for that on your laptop or desktop, wherever you might be, and start dropping a link to that thing as best as possible in the chat, okay? Now make it quick, because we're running out of time. <laughs> Don't think about it too hard. What is that film? What is that piece of media? What is that art object? What is that experience that to you, when you're in it, you all, and you're always reminded of how that thing resonated with you because somehow it connects to the value that you see in your work. So start dropping it in the link. Y'all can do something different in the space. Exactly, jot it down for you. You can write it on the table. There's some, some drawing materials here. Um, and again, don't work for it just if it's a title or if it's a piece of choreography, Sarah, or if it's something that you've experienced recently, put it down in as few words as possible. Does anyone in the virtual space have any questions? Just un 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 unmute and speak up, please. I see G man, you dropped something in there. G's drop. Okay, move it quickly. Don't think about it too hard. For me, that would be Ralph Ellis's The Invisible Man. Okay. Yeah, just jot it down. Just jot it down. Just jot it down. Because we're actually not going to even share this. Okay, okay. I mean, we're sharing it. Okay, thank you for that. Um, and actually, as you start writing, the song Holy by Jamila Woods. Okay, Turning Red. Beautiful. Instructions for a Freedom. Beautiful. Art made from found materials, trash, recyclables. Thank you, Hannah. Uh, Sirens of Titan. Beautiful, beautiful, and, and thank you for dropping the prompt. And, uh, what do you got, Rich? The Lion King. The Lion King. That mm -hmm. always comes, come, I, I think I know why. <laughs> yeah? Anyone over here? The Dances for Solidarity logo, the circle. Okay. <laughs> the circle. The circle. This, you got something over here? Um, yes and no. <laughs> um, it's a song I did called Food for Thought. A song you did called Food for Thought. Okay. Also, any work by Andy Goldsworthy. Mm -hmm. Endless poetry. Thank you, Yuko. Okay. This is good. Lee, you, got, you drop anything in the chat here? Esplanade by Paul Taylor. Sorry, I've been reading everyone's thing, and then I, I was questioning because I thought of my one a video that I did. That's good. Okay. Yeah. That's okay. You can, you can be selfish. <laughs> <laughs> Behind bars by myself. Thank you. That's come from Passive. And so 
Keep thinking about that. There's a reason why you return to that thing. It reminds you of why you keep coming back to the work. There's a particular reason why it resonates because it conveys, it tells you that this is worthwhile. It tells you that there's a purpose why arts can work in intervening, why arts can bring us closer, more closely together, establish connections, and therefore work toward change. Now, instead of continuing to talk about these source materials, these citations, I want you to do the job now of taking and holding on to that thing and replacing it with an image. Now, it doesn't have to be an image from that source material, so I don't need to see Pumbaa. Right? <laughs> Instead, I want you to think about how you might encapsulate that source material and what it means for you, the why it brings you to the value in your work. Replace that with a single image. And try to find an image or similar or a similar image and try to find and try to drop a link to that image. Now it can be a simple Google search. Don't work at it too hard. We just want examples that are associated with your source material, but again, that really start to visualize the reason that that citation came up for you. Any questions from the virtual space or anyone else here? And for you here, and actually, as a matter of fact, for y'all there, if a drawing is coming to mind, go ahead, go for that. You know, if you want to just scribble something real quick, we don't have enough time for a masterpiece or anything, but please do that. But what we want to see is translating this source material into a visual that conveys that stated purpose. That resonance, yeah? Now, for an example, I'll give you an example. You know, I stated that one of the things I always return to as a reminder is Ralph Ellison's The Invisible Man. Now, rather than look for the, the, the cover of that book, I might look for a visual that conveys the idea of societal obscurity or societal invisibility, of being a man of color walking through this world and not being seen. So these are the types of images in connection with your source material that you want to see. And that's just my, thank you, Ajwa. All right, and if you can, try to find actual links because we're going to pull them up on screen, okay? Thank you, Bruce. Beautiful. And for those of y'all that are drawing or coloring or doing anything in the space, cut them out. So grab a scissor and cut them out of the actual piece of paper so that we can show it more closely to the screen. Yeah? All right, keep them coming, y'all. <laughs> Christian, I see you, all right. Beautiful, beautiful. Just keep dropping them in. An image that to you connects to the, to the why piece. Why do you keep returning to that? What is it about this, that source material that conveys the essence, that value that you continue to drive toward? and replace that with an image. Let's see those images. Thank you, G. I've already got a hand up. Mm -hmm. That's a hand phrase, is it? Okay. So, you said image, but so I, I took the phrase, or I took the title of the song I did. I okay. In a group, and then it came up with this quote. It says, coming together is a beginning, keeping together is a process, working together is success. Beautiful. Can you find something for me that is about this togetherness, an image? All right, thank you, y'all, over here. And as they start rolling in, Pastor, can you share screen and just start clicking on people's links? Now, everyone, keep working if you're working, but this is what I want you to do. We're going to take in what everyone has offered, 
we have someone come in into this space. And rather than go through, and it's also for the sake of time, rather than describe each image and the reason why we each selected each image, because we don't have time for that, though I would love to do that. We're just going to go through the links. And for the group, we're going to collectively just marinate what has been offered. And so in other words, we're going to go through the, ex the, the exercise of collectively examining what values might be present in this group, not by sharing the word, but by sharing the image of that word. And we're going to see what we see. All right, now we can't, we can't uh, see the screen, can we, Pastor? No, we can't over here. I'm trying to, I'll have to, if you can. I don't want to mess up your flow, but um, now keep going. they're seeing it online. Y'all, they're seeing see it. it. I need to yeah. see it though. <laughs> All right. I can. Uh, so y'all are seeing this phoenix, yeah? Let me try to. Let, let me do. Give something. me a, a thumb raise on I'm, virtual screen. I just stopped. Let me try something. I'm if you're seeing, see. okay. I'm gonna double screen it so you can see what I'm putting. Do y'all see in virtual space? Do you see a phoenix? No, not yet. Not, not yet. yet. Not yet. Hold on. Just that one. Yeah. There you go. Hey, there now we, we go. Y'all see, see the phoenix now in the virtual space. Yep, that's yeah, these thumbs up. Okay. okay, so that's one example. We're going to keep f flowing through examples. Yeah? So I'm going in order now. Sorry, I keep putting the same one up. Uh, let me also. Okay, so we have the arrows. Yeah, I just meant to do that first circle arrow. The circular one, Christian? Okay. That's that right? Okay, so let's. Really focus in on that circular image. You might want to, unless it doesn't oh, matter on sorry. their end, right? Yeah, there you oh, go. Sorry. There you go. So that is the image that we're contemplating. Thank you, Christian. Keep it moving, Pastor. Okay. Interesting. I'm making Pastor sweat over here. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. Okay, so we just saw this one. Yeah. We just saw that one. Keep it okay, moving. Right. We're going to keep going. Yes, we got that one. All right, beautiful. Take mm. it in, beautifully. Mm. Uh, beautiful example here. Keep it moving. Mm. Okay, mm. very nice. And again, start contemplating what you believe to be present in these images. How they might be visualizing the intentionality, the value, the essence of our collective practices. Okay, nice image. like that very much. Okay, mm -hmm. okay, beautiful. Mm -hmm. And I think mm. you can all start to imagine yeah. why the pe why individuals are bringing these images into the room. Keep it, keep it moving, Pastor. I think that's the last one. This is all right. a, a video someone put in. All right, let's just keep it on the still. Okay. Let me grab some of these. All right, y'all, can we go back to this? Anything over here? Can yeah. I get it? Yeah. All right, let me. <laughs> okay, that's one example. Y'all seeing that? Beautiful. Some, some drawings in the room. Oh, look at that. Jesus, Pastor. <laughs> Infinity symbol. Okay. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. Is it this? Oh, oh, we got one here. All right. Oh, interesting. Okay. One, is there got one, one uh, here? Catherine, you have one? Yeah, that's not. Here we go. I can try to zoom into you. Just move that box out the way. Yeah, there you go. Can we see? Can y'all see that? Mm -hmm. All right. Now, it's 12.16. We're doing great. Try to review in your mind's eye the images that have come up for this group. The images that somehow visualized the essence, the quality, the values that we hope to keep returning to, that drives this practice toward 
social change. When we talk about change, we talk about creating rupture from within. Intervention is a strategy. It's a space to create change from within, to create that little bit of rupture that might then ripple out. So we started with ourselves and how we see our work. Then we went to that source material that keeps reminding us of, of that purpose. And then we went from the source material to an image that visualizes that purpose. And now we've collectively shared that image to see what is at the center of this group and what we value. What is our purpose to get a sense of the collective purpose of why we are even here in this room together, sharing this time. So for everyone, again, reviewing what you've seen, rather than describe a particular image, tell us, tell each other, what is it that is rising to the surface in as few words as possible that is a value of the collective practices in this room? What did you see, in other words? What did you observe out of these images as to why people dedicate to themselves to this type of work? Anyone? Just unmute. Keep going. A rebirth or reincarnation. Rebirth or reincarnation. Thank you, Dizzy. Anyone else? A bridge over absences. A bridge over absences. There, were, there was many that conveyed an idea of connection, mm -hmm. of bridging, of getting from one place to another. Anyone else? The idea of paying it forward. Lee, were you about to unmute? Uh, I was going to say emergence. Emergence, okay. So similar but slightly different. Something, something coming from somewhere. And, and the idea of rebirth, also connected to this idea of rebirth. Anyone else? Just unmute. What did you see in the images? Hope, light after darkness, absolutely. There was quite a few that were about luminescence, about light in the dark, yeah? I saw, uh, I saw a patience in the image that the person was putting together, that thousand piece puzzle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, patience, there was, yeah, there was quite a bit of that actually, yeah, thank you. Liberation. Aspiration, someone said in the virtual space, is that Liber right? Liberation. liberation. Liberation, thank you. I saw the puzzle building and Building also, build, uh, building and connection, Abs absolutely, especially with that puzzle piece, right? Mm -hmm. There was a few that had circular motions, at least two. So this idea of, I think you're going into this idea of paying it forward, but I would also, I'm also seeing the idea of community, of, communi of communal, of working in, within, Anyone else? Inclusion. Inclusion. Thank you, Sarah. Go ahead, Hannah. Renewal. Renewal. Okay, so this keeps coming up. Yeah. Anyone else? Reset. Reset. Okay. <laughs> right? Yeah. What else did you see in those images in the virtual space? There was the phoenix. There was the circular arrows. There was the flowers, right? A sort of circular flower image. Um, there was a constellation of stars. There was the puzzle. Contribution. Contribution. Thank you. Regeneration. Regeneration. Thank you, Bruce. Transformation. Transformation. Thank you. Mm -hmm. From something to the next. What other images do we have? Of course, there's, there was the sun. There was an image of the sun. There was an open eye. Mm -hmm. Restoration. 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 Okay, there was the infinity symbol. That's right. Okay, so now possibility. <laughs> All right, let's highlight a few of the words that have come up. There was this idea of communi of communication, connection, building, bridging. Right. I can almost draw that. There was I there was an idea of transfer transformation, renewal. Regeneration, emergence. But there was also the idea of inclusion, cyclical, um, belonging, community. Now, 
if we hold all those as true and as necessary, as vital in this work, how would we start to describe the possibilities of art to have power, to have potential, to have effectiveness in system intervention if we want to communicate those three ideas? And so we have, I've sort of distilled down what our observations into three buckets. This idea of renewal, regeneration, emergence. The second being this idea of bridging, connecting. And the third being this idea of community, belonging, inclusion. Now if we hold those three areas as true, vital, necessary, in our practices, the work of creating change, the work of intervening in unmovable systems, what is it that we are trying to share? What is it that we are trying to advocate for? In other words, take those three buckets and now create a sentence that you feel is the thing that articulates the value of our collective work and why the hell we do it. Connection, bridging, community, belonging, the renewal, restoration. What is it that we're trying to say in advocating for arts and creative arts engagement as system intervention? Anyone? No wrong answers, given an attempt. I want to hear from Lots of people in like two minutes. Say the question one more time, please. Take the three buckets and turn them into a sentence. The sentence that you would have to use to advocate for this work. And you, of course, you can drop it in the chat as well. But also just blurt out. Anyone in the room? Art is another choice that works better than the current choices we use. Okay, art is another choice that works better than the options at our disposal. The I want choices to build we on use. that. Art is a uh, is another outlet that uh, that 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 allows positive reinforcement. And, and, and what's this word I'm looking for? Restoration, for lack of better. Mm-hmm. Art is another outlet that allows for restoration and, I forget the first word you used. Reinforce. Uh, it's, it's on the screen. Okay, thank you. Positive reinforcement, thank you. Anyone else? Think about those three areas that were present in the visualization of our values. What is it that we have to say in communicating our work? What is our stated purpose? Art is um, the intersection between what we feel and what we go through on a daily basis. Okay. Did you all hear that? Mm -hmm. Try to, the pastor's going to try to script as we go on. Christian, I feel like you were ready. <laughs> so You're on mute. Rick? Um, art is the intersection between what we feel oh, and what I'm we go sorry. through on a daily basis. I'm sorry. put me on the spot. But, uh, something about how we're all connected. Every per person has belonging, and ours is a community that surrounds to bring about renewal and kind of lifting through art. Uh, there you go, yeah. Thank you. Some folks <laughs> drop it in the chat. Art allows, uh, art promotes a change of heart. There you go. Very simple, sweet. Art promotes change of heart. Anyone else? We have art brings people together of all nationalities, a zone free of barriers. Art is a regenerative process. Art is the intersection between what we feel and what we go through on a daily basis. Art provides a way to live the possibilities of hope, renewal, growth, mm -hmm. and a new path. Mm -hmm. The arts is a path to not only individualization, but interconnectedness. Art saves my life. Art saves lives. What is it that we are stating as our purpose? When you have five seconds in a room with someone in the seat of power, 
how are you advocating for art in that space? As a way to show this reflection that uh, you, utilizing this outlet will uh, 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 reduce. Say it louder, Dizzy. Oh, man. I'm trying to. Using the, uh, using the outlet of art will sit here and. and uh, what is that? Oh, man. Hold it. Hold it. Keep, keep going on it. Don't worry. You go. Art gives us opportunity to create what we have yet to see. Beautiful. Mm. Art is the water that washes away, that offers renewal. Art humanizes. Thank you, Adjoy. We're running out of time, and I want to be conscientious of and sensitive to people's days. I wanted to bring us to this language, this language that for some reason we often omit when describing why art has a place in this realm. I often will say, when I'm given that five seconds, when I'm in a space where there's power and decision making happening, where art is usually not part of the conversation, I will often say that no policy shift or, and no legislative change will ever make a damn unless someone is able to see possibility for themselves. Unless we restore our sense of humanity, no policy change will do the job. Unless we see each other as human being, no policy shift will get the job done. And that is what we need to state. Art is a reflection. Exactly, exactly what you were saying. Um, there's not going to be a law in the world that's going to change anything unless there's, unless it's being reflected, unless you see that change, or unless you see something that's going to benefit from that change, but there's still no law, no words that are going to do anything. It causes action. Most people realize or they listen to or they gravitate towards media, uh, videos, pictures, and, and everyone will feel so heartfelt over this message being portrayed in this type of art form. So why not capitalize and utilize that to show that reflection? Thank you, Lizzie. Uh, what I hear is that art is a more acceptable form of accepting um, um, just portraying what's going on in real life than violence. It's we'll easier get more to done through the lens of art than through the lens of violence. Um, people yeah. are more able to connect and understand each other by looking at art and saying, okay, I can feel your pain. I can see what you're going through. By looking at this drawing and understanding this is what you're seeing in your vision. Rich, versus, a little louder. <clears throat> versus acting out in anger and lashing out and you know having a disagreement between words because the one thing we can say or agree on sometimes, words can have a, a miscommunication between two people, but art can also have that, that long-lasting effect where two people can look at the same thing and get the same exact thing, but mm -hmm. if you speak to someone, they might hear it differently, their tone might throw you off, mm -hmm. but visualizing something and looking at it and being in that space with someone can actually put you in, in harmony with that other person. So um, there's, there's, there's more good by looking at an art piece than using violence to, to portray the same image. Um, so that's what I'm, I'm, I'm gathering from art and what you're seeing. Because on both parts, from the creator and from the recipient, mm -hmm. right, the creator right. gives this idea to get off whatever energy that they may be relishing in. And the recipient can, can in any shape, form, or fashion, grasp that. That's right. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry to rush us through this piece. I know people need to jump. But as, as pastors ask you to do, try to hold on to the words that we've shared. And this is where we will build from for our next workshop in June. And we'll share the schedule. <laughs> what we want to do is start from a stated collective, collectively stated purpose. And in workshop two, three, and four, we will then move into a deeper understanding of trauma-informed practices. We will also move into a case study investigation of how arts and system intervention has worked in the past. In other words, a sort of examination or historical um, study of 
arts activism collaborations. And then we will also spend some time during a, third, a fourth workshop uh, reviewing the pedagogy and curriculum that you all bring to the table. With this background, with this foundation of collective study and investigation, we'll look at what we thought we knew. That was a lot in a little bit of time. I would, if you have a few minutes, I would love to offer the platform to Sarah to just close this out. Thank you so much, everyone. Um, I'm just going to invite you as a closing ritual to take this moment to check in with yourself. A way that I like to do this, and you're welcome to join me in this if you want. Put one hand on your heart and one hand on your belly or diaphragm area. If you want, you can close your eyes. Notice what and how you feel. And I know we've, we've spent a lot of time in words, but I'm going to ask if a one word reflection or response to your experience of this workshop comes up for you. I'm just going to invite you popcorn style either in this, in this space here, the Brooklyn Museum space, just shout it out. If you're in the virtual space, you can just unmute and drop it. Different. Electricity. Building. Possibility. Anchor. Relieve. to our conclusion, if there's any other place on your body that you feel like needs a little touch, a little movement, another breath, we can go ahead and take that and we know that you'll be making your exit now with all of these reflections and responses reverberating until we can be together again. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you, y'all. Thank you, y'all. Yes. And before y'all hop off, if there are any thoughts or comments, reflections, uh, feedback you want to leave in the chat for us, that'll be great. I'll, we'll make sure we uh, take a look at it. You know you can email me directly, whatever y'all want, but definitely want your feedback and thoughts on this. Uh, thank you again for joining us, everybody, and bearing with us through the uh, tech stuff. <laughs> thank you, everybody. Bye. Bye. Everyone, great connecting with you.